go public, let it share. You are now <laughs> live. Don't you see it? It's right there. Hallelujah. Thank him now. I'm probably going to always have to set this up. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to get ready to share this. Oh, I don't see it. I don't see it on mm -hmm. Facebook yet. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't see it live yet. Hold on, let me see. Oh my goodness. Sometimes it takes a minute to get in there. Like a delayed type reaction. But usually right. even by her name on her page, it had like that little green dot showing that she's live. Yeah, well, she it's on my, it got one share. So that must be you. Is, that, you. is your page connected? You connected, right? Huh? You're connected, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I still don't see it. What in the freak? Oh, here we go. Ah, I got you. Okay. How did you share that? But it on my thing, it don't have no share button. Anyway, let me go back. All right, greetings, everyone. Thank y'all for tuning in to Shameless Conversation. Again, myself, with myself, uh, Marnisha Thomas, your GPS, which means you're God's personal servant. Um, and tonight I am excited, like, yo, I'm really amped. Um, because this conversation, it's going to be a good one. And first of all, I have the most amazing people in the world on this platform today that i really love um so first let me hey shara first let me say this because let me do my intros real quick and then y'all can do y'all intros but no actually robin go first yeah clean the pearls. <laughs> hi everybody sorry my voice is a little hoarse um but i'm robin robbins the midwife i'm affectionately referred to as the midwife due to the unmatched ability to partner with others and empower them to give birth and produce. And so that's kind of uh, my thing and what I do, helping people to transform trauma and transform negative experiences in order to ultimately birth their new. And so, yeah, we just out here living and, and trying to make it happen. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for ha having me. I appreciate it. All right, cool. Let's go next to the raw apostle, Apostle Q. I am Q, Josiah Thomas, <laughs> senior pastor and founder of The Real Center. We are not a religious entity or a traditional church or sect of uh, bondage, captive people. Um, such a free spirit. Um, my heart and compassion is love and people, humans. Um, I deal with relation, humanity, um, and I love all of God's people, all of them, black, yellow, purple, straight, gay, crooked, <laughs> all of them. And I'm mm -hmm. just me, y'all. I'm raw, raw and uncut. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Let me uh, get uh, Leanne Zahr Stockley. Uh, I'm just Leanne Zahr um, Stockley. I'm a relationality specialist and uh, minister and all that other stuff, too. I've just recently found out I have to say that too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been trying uh, to get out of that. Yeah, I just recently realized I got to say that. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm, you know, simple. I guess you'll figure out who I am as we go up throughout the night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Tisa, thank you for joining us. So let me do my intros in the way I see these people to be because y'all are so modest. Praise the Lord. Um. First of all, I love the way God kind of linked up me with each one of you guys. So quick story, Robin, Q, and I went to the same church. I did not go to the church when Robin was there, but I heard of Robin because of her dance ministry, which she's a phenomenal prophetic worshiper, dancer. Yes. Wow. Um, she can teach, she choreographed amazing. Um, so She's all in that whole prophetic realm. She does have the office of a prophet um, as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but she's just true, raw, and uncut. And so I met her. We ended up taking the same leadership class. 
and we ended up being partners. <laughs> like, and it was just like, bam, like connected. And we started talking and was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, so that's you. I heard about you, you know, just with the dance and everything else. And so God brought us together. Um, and that was really dope. And then to know that she knew Q already. And it's just like, oh, cool. God has a sense of humor. Um, I've met Leander all of my life. He is my apostle, my covering, um, my best friend, my covenant partner, my brother, my confidant. He's all those great things. He is a worship artist as well. He's a worshiper, which means he ended up being in the artist form because everybody wants to take the worship home. So I still listen to our unedited live recording to this day. <laughs> um, That's <so> <laughs> Uh, yes, I'll be jamming. I was jamming. I'll be telling people about it. Um, and Apostle Q uh, met a couple years ago here, and we have built a bond, a covenant over this time. And, you know, we do, we do ministry together, and we have a kindred spirits, and that's just my brother. So, um, yeah. So tonight, let's get right into it. Hey, Key. Hey, Nikita, what's going on? Um, so let's get into it. We want to talk about boundaries versus barriers. So we have this whole season, right, of this self-love talk, this, oh, I got to create, I got to um, keep my peace. I got to protect my space. I got to protect my peace. I got to do all this stuff. And so me and it was, God dealt with me about it, and some things I start seeing as a as a barrier instead of a boundary, because we have been on this self love thing, not to just uh, loving us more. It ended up being a defense mechanism. Yes, baby. And so now we're let me protect myself, and technically, from a spiritual standpoint, God is supposed to do the protection. Yeah. And not us. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of, you know, delve into this because um, that's going to preach us, right, Tim? What's going on, Tim? Anyway, um, that's my other boo. Uh, best friend for 20 years. Uh, hey, my loves. 20 years? How old are y'all? My goodness. <laughs> Young I'm, old. You. I'm the youngest one on here? You probably yeah. are. I'm 44. <laughs> Y'all know black don't crack. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, no, I'm 44 too. Okay. So, well, we young. We, uh, we ripe. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest one. Oh, God. Here we go. I think I'm the baby, bro. Okay. How old are you, Rob? Oh, damn, you might we is not baby. telling the saints we live, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Let's see okay. the barrier. You Notice she didn't say it. That meant, that meant don't ask. Right, right, right. I'm So yeah, so talking about um, just knowing y'all point of view from what y'all experience in life, what um, <clears throat> what y'all have seen, not just experience from just church or you know this whole kind of what's the what what's the catch word? Um, not catch word. What, we in this season. I'm trying to think this fad we in. That's the word I'm looking for. We go end up going through fads, you know. And one I can go back just a little bit before was, oh yeah, I go to church and I'm in religion. That's religion. Oh no, nope, I ain't religion no more. I ain't into religion. I'm into relationship. Then it's oh nope, I'm not into relationship. I'm to spirituality. You know what I'm saying? So it kept going from season changes to changes to create more of a safe space for us but i have found trying to create more of a safe space for us have closed us off more spiritually because if we are walking in relationship that god has created and founded we didn't create relationship god did so how do y'all feel about having boundaries q answer that one um, the definition of boundaries or yeah I would say uh, transparently and personally I've never really had or set them 
um, and over the past few years of ministry and relationships, I have learned that they are necessary. Um, my excuse or barrier was God is loving and I got to love everything, everybody, no matter what. And that religiously, my religious background always taught me, you know, to be forgiving, forbearing, persevering with people. So I had a religious mindset as it related to my emotional health, my mental health. Like I was not allowed to mix it. Having feelings, mental, psychological, ain't had nothing to do with God in church. So I had to suppress these things. And so on the outward appearance, I was always allowing what I did not deserve. I allowed who I did not deserve. I allowed people to mishandle me, um, use me, misappropriate me and my funds and my life and my gifts. Um, and so I found, like I said, in the last year or two that I needed to set boundaries for myself and who, what I allowed in my life. Um, and I never found myself being mad, angry, bitter with people more at myself because what I allowed. And so I understood then that I did not have any boundaries. I lacked boundaries. And instead I put up barriers. I had mental barriers. I had religious and psychological barriers that prevented me from flowing, loving, living how and who I was really supposed to be. And so I think boundaries are very necessary in every aspect of life, every arena, every area. I don't give a darn if it's religious, work, school, personal friend, family, baby mama, baby daddy, ex, animal, it's got, you got to have boundaries. And I don't think it's no such thing as safe boundaries, but there might be such thing as healthy boundaries. Um, we just got to be wise and discerning when it comes to setting boundaries for ourselves and others. And I think that we don't even set enough boundaries for our own self. So how can we set them for other things and people? Mm. You might want to tag on that right quick. Leanza. I mean, that was, that was, that was very good. Boundaries, boundaries generally, you know, um, and even from a mental health perspective, it's like boundaries are the parameters we set. Sometimes people say they're the limits you set, right? But that limiting, that limit word can be limiting, right? So the, the truth of it is, is that boundaries are the parameters you set for yourself first, you mm -hmm. know, um, like Apostle said, it's like for yourself first, right? In relationship and for others in relationships with others. You know, so it's just a, it's just the parameters that I said. I always say it, it like this. It's like if you're playing a game and not to relate this life and relationships to a game. But if you're playing a game of football, the game is not fun and can't be played properly if you can run all over the place. Exactly. Right. So the boundaries are set in place so that we can play the game right mm -hmm. so that we can do this the way that it's supposed to be done. And a lot mm -hmm. of the way we're using boundaries today, though, is it's everybody's trying to protect this and yes. that boundaries are not necessarily about protecting protection yes in the way in which we generally use them they're just the parameters that we set for saying this is how we thrive this mm -hmm. is this is what i need in order for me to thrive this is how i need to be in order for me to thrive but this is also how i need to be in order for you to thrive in my presence and vice mm -hmm. versa you know so it's, it's a very relational word that has become very uh, individualistic um mm -hmm which a lot of our society is becoming very individualistic, all in the name of, you know, doing me and protecting myself. So, yeah, you know, okay. so it's, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, so it's a, it's a, it's a piggyback, you know, off of what he said. Cause you know, and I just see, I see more of the misuse of it, especially in my practice and counseling and you know, whatever, it's just kind of like we're all over the place. And I think that we all have had those spaces where we've been guilty of not setting the proper parameters you know, again, I, I prefer to wear parameters than limits, you know, but setting the proper parameters for what we need in order for our relationship to thrive. And those parameters that are set have to come from a place of sitting, not just what triggers you. Because see, we set parameters just based on what well, it triggered me because, you know, 90 years ago this happened and whatever. So I need to set up these. We need to first come from a place of, of recognizing our nature. And our boundaries should begin to flow from there. Here's one thing, and we'll probably say this later. Our boundaries should be inviting. Mm. Mm. Go on, go ahead, go go ahead on. I ain't, I'm, I'm mm. gonna be right there for a second. Mm. Mm. Go ahead, yeah, Rob. I, that you were more so oh, apostle. That was so good, um, but you were tapping into kind of like my perspective of boundaries. So for me, coming from the coaching space. Um, 
what I have learned in my personal life, first, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that first, is that in order to set healthy boundaries, one must know themselves first. One, not only, you know, know yourself, but you also have to love yourself. I hear it's such a craze. Oh, boundaries. What's your boundaries? What's, what's your standards? What are your non-negotiables? What, how can you set those things healthily if you, not, if you haven't been able to be in a space to purge, to unlearn, to relearn, mm -hmm. to get to know yourself and to love yourself? So a lot of what I see and what I've experienced as far as, you know, with others in, in, in my work is the fact that people are making boundaries, non-negotiables and standards from the lens and out of the space of, of a trauma. You're, you're, trauma. you're doing mm -hmm. it from unresolved mm -hmm. issues. You're making these standards, these boundaries, mm -hmm. these non-negotiables out of, out of your past pains. Those are not healthy boundaries. Those are old coping mechanisms and things that you use to survive that no longer work here presently now and who you are and who you are becoming. Mm. So in terms of work, I've learned that what I've had to do is take people on that journey. Let's go there first. Let's heal. Mm. Let's learn how to love yeah. ourselves first. Let's get to actually know ourselves first so that we can properly understand how to set these boundaries. Um, and then as Apostle Q even said earlier, making sure that we set them for ourselves first. Because it's so easy to hold people to a standard, but mm. I'm holding you to a standard that I don't even want to hold for myself. That's unfair. Correct. It's unfair for me to ex expect something of you that I'm not even at least trying to implement and be consistent in within myself. So that I've learned from, you know, the, the workspace. But personally, I had to go through that journey of, wait a minute, this is not working. And, and I think this is not working. That's how that revelation came to me because I don't know who I am right now. And a lot of people are afraid to admit that. Listen, as long as we are alive, growing and evolving, if we are not consistently according ourselves, consistently wooing ourselves, dating ourselves, you could wake up one day and not know who you are because you have grown that much. You've changed that much. And so learning ourselves, staying present with ourselves and loving ourselves through, it's like a never ending thing. It's not like, oh, one day, oh, I didn't love myself. And now today I do. No, honey. It doesn't work like that. That thing is a journey of, of, of constantly asking yourself why. why. Why is it that I felt that whenever I wasn't doing something for someone or serving or performing in some type of way, I felt unworthy of love? What is it about this thing that makes me feel like if I am not doing something, mm. I'm unlovable? Mm. It's a consistent journey as these things arise, us being self-aware and diving into those things, calling a spade a spade, not being afraid to tackle these things. This is how we'll be able to release and purge and come to a place where we can honestly say this is a healthy boundary. This is not a boundary that I'm setting from pain, from trauma, from unresolved experiences, and so forth and so forth and so on. This is something that I'm, I'm recognizing because I know who I am. I love myself, and I'm recognizing that this is necessary for me, as man of God said, and this is also necessary for others to interact with me. I call it rules of engagement. So boundaries, standards, non-negotiables, and then I have rules of engagement. And I had to come up with that this, this past year. Hmm. But yeah, that's my spill. I love y'all. Thank you for coming <laughs> to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> love so, it. Love it. Uh, Leanza said, setting boundaries supposed to be inviting. Mm, I heard that. It should be inviting. It should be inviting. It should be inviting. But we have made boundaries as 
uh, way to say, get away from me. Mm -hmm. We have set the boundary. So then the boundary is no longer a boundary. It's a barrier. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, it's set up. So when we talk about barriers and if something is blocked in, it can't go nowhere. You ain't getting out and nothing coming in. So we be creating these boundaries, but we're really setting up barriers and we're wondering why nothing is flowing. Because some for things to flow, it has to go two ways. It got something got to come in, something has to go out. But if you're blocked and barricaded in, you're suffocating, you're going to die. So we can't allow our healing to really happen because we have created a barrier. It's like we have a tube, the, the vein, whatever, you know, when it is, they put it in the arm and the IV, right? But then they have a, also a way to block it. So it, they, they put a clamp. And that's oh, you talking about me, huh? No, <laughs> all yeah. of that got all that right here, all right here, right, right here. So it's nothing, it's nothing coming, and it's nothing going. Mm -hmm. So how can you even detox if you set in the place of a barrier? And if you're, and I did make, if you're detoxing, because the way I see it, right, in the barrier, like, like I see Joseph, okay. We may have a top on the lid. I mean, at the top where, you know, where, where, where they threw Joseph in and everything else and left him there. He couldn't get out. He couldn't climb up or whatever. But, wow, I've never thought about it like this until now. Hmm. When what? But what he had to deposit, when he had to use it, he had to use it right there. So he lived in his mess. He hmm. lived and had to breathe and inhale more sick, more nasty smells of his own waste, his bowels, everything else, because he was in the barrier. He was hidden. So if we are putting ourselves in barriers and naturally we have to release, we are inhaling our own toxins. We are getting sick sick and most sick but we're talking about oh i'm about to reach the masses because i got my boundaries oh you ain't coming in i i go see the devil fall off and he gonna i'm gonna catch you but you ain't seeing no devil fall off you're seeing yourself because that's what you smell mm. your own sugar honey iced tea mm. and then if you're smelling that and inhaling that you're operating out of that and thinking you're operating out of God, but you're, you're operating out of your fear, your ego, your, your, your stinky crap, all the mess, all the stuff that people have poured into you that you haven't released out because now we're walking around barricading ourselves and think mm -hmm. it's a God thing when it's an ego thing. Mm -hmm. We cannot heal properly if we are in a barricade situation. Tag I, think, Go ahead. I want to throw said, my whole he said that He said that the analogy, and I'm a, I'm a high school football referee and official. So when you talked about boundaries and out of bounds, basketball or football, barriers prevent movement. Mm -hmm. Boundaries allows movement and a succession of consecutive movement, you know, angles, but it has a point where it stops, but it's not a barrier because you can run out of bounds That's and then great. you can come back in bounds. You hear what I'm saying? And so these psychological, mental, spiritual barriers that we put up, and I think I put something on Facebook last week, everybody talking about, oh, I'm returning the same energy, all this reciprocity, scratching my back. Like it's such, it's so cliche at this moment because like like Marnisha said, GPS, we are defecating ourselves. And I say that because our verbal, ritualistic memes and cliches and quotes, we think that we are strengthening ourselves or we're governing ourselves 
when we're actually barricading our own self because we're in mental bondage and we're becoming enslaved by all of these quotes and all these Facebook memes and all the fads of what people are doing. Oh, I'm returning to David. If you don't call me, I ain't texting you back. But if none of us do nothing, producing no energy, we all blocked and locked in. So where are we moving? Where are we going? We, we can't have boundaries because we're in bondage and we're captivated by our own barrier mentally, socially, emotionally. And then we, we make excuses because somebody has hurt us. Somebody has pissed us off. And, and I hate this church stigma with this church hurt people. They got this barrier up because, hey, I'm not going to church no more because the last five churches, the leader was sleeping and screwing everybody or the leader was taking the money and the tithes and offering and buying cars and setting up an Airbnb and sleeping with little boys and little girls. We create this mental and religious barrier when church wasn't about fame and people and theatrics. We have misproportioned ourselves in these areas due to what somebody else has said or done to us. They ain't free, we ain't free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Uh, uh, Lee, y'all gonna tag in. You get us something uh, to say, Lee. You look like you was about to no, say. No, I mean, y'all, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's right on point. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think it's right on point. I, I, you know, it's sad to me because, again, like you said, you know, people are, you know, we're, we're building these barriers or whatever, and you think you're doing it in the name of God. You're not. You're actually doing it in the name of the devil, which is the, which is the devil. Devil Diablo is what his name. What what that name that word actually means. Diablo means division. Mm -hmm. It means separation. So we're spending all of this energy and all of this time trying to separate ourselves. Exactly. The further and further we get from oneness, the sicker we get. And that's what we don't tend to realize. Every, all this looks great in our society right now. Everybody's on their own own journey and in their <laughs> own truth, as if they own truth. Like, you know, so it's like it's their own truth. And the, some of these things, it's not that it doesn't make sense considering the society that we're in, but it's taking us away from who we really, truly are. And I think a lot of times we're not recognizing that again with the boundaries thing. First thing, I, you know, I've asked some people, you know, the question is like, so what are your boundaries? And, and, you know, whatever. And then they start listening to what people can't do with them. It's like, no, I asked you what was your boundaries. Your boundaries are for you to keep you in alignment first. See, I'm about to say something. To keep <laughs> you in alignment. They're for you to keep you in alignment. Mm -hmm. Right. And people fall in play with that. It's like, but again, it should be more. But we, OK, so we have our center. We have the core center of our being, the essence of who we are, which mm -hmm. one is a very, which is relation. So while we're obsessed with getting away from everybody and cutting everybody off and, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. I have no idea. I do have an idea, but I'm not going to share it, you know? So it's like, but it's not, it's not the order. It's not the alignment, right? So that space though, of all of this trying to separate from people, and I get it, people have been hurt. The truth is people have been hurt. We've been violated. Or if you haven't been violated directly, you've seen somebody violated. So mm -hmm. to to retract, I said uh, last week, I think I was talking to a couple. And I was like, and these boundaries that y'all have set, even with each other, are stopping you, which are barriers, like you said, GPS. Like you said, they're really barriers that are stopping you from intimacy and growth. But all of our life and nature is about intimacy and growth. But everybody's on their own little journey trying to do their thing. And we're misplacing and misusing words that should be helping us to expand who we are every year with your bound with your boundaries and i'm doing air quotes if you're truly centered and you're truly operating from your god mm -hmm. space your divine space your divine relational world your boundaries should be expanding to be more inclusive i'm not saying you're becoming wild i'm not saying mm -hmm. you're allowed all kind of things to happen or people to treat you any kind of way or this that, and the other but it should be expanding the table mm -hmm. right and instead we're contracting mm -hmm. uh, like robin said out of robin said out of out of our traumas and out of our whatever if if it's your trauma mind that's creating your boundary you can rest assured that it's not a healed mind operating you're not operating mm -hmm. in wisdom necessarily you're operating potentially in fear right and there's, it is just a difference and and the energy of it is different but we're spending more of our time in defense boundaries are not about defense mm. Mm. Ooh. 
can I? Oh, okay. Let me oh read my. Let me read this. Well, not quote what somebody just said. It's amazing yeah. that we will not embrace that good and evil. And evil resides in some places found in the same person. All of us have good and evil. This is a necessary conversation. And that's true. Yeah. All of us definitely have good and evil. Um, I was talking about that the other day. We want to just talk about what, oh, what somebody do. We only kind of magnify whether it's good or it's bad. Mm. We don't <laughs> touch on that God gave us everything that we need. And also we possess all the negativity stuff, negative stuff as well. So if we don't walk in these boundaries that we said that are for us, to how we supposed to live, not how others, not how we make others live for us, but how we live to them, because it's an example that we supposed to be setting. So my boundary, if it's like, well, I don't want nobody just slapping me, get they get mad at me and they slap me, right? I don't want that. So I'm not going to operate at that. I'm not going to, if Q get mad at me, I get mad at him and he say, Marisha, bah! just knock him upside his head. I have not, that's not inviting for him. Mm -hmm. He will walk away. And he needs to walk away. Mm -hmm. But before he hit me back, because he's going <laughs> to, because it will be a slap back. Right? And so I'm about to throw something in here because I'm just thinking of it. So we go through things in relationships. And now the another word that has been so cliche, or not cliche, but we've been hyped on it, is toxic. Oh my Jesus. These words are triggering for you. So <laughs> listen, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Robin. On <laughs> so it's just, first of all, this is so good. I'm just so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating so good right now. Are y'all eating? Y'all in the comments talk back to us. Are y'all eating good? Because I, I know I'm eating real good right through here. And I've wanted to throw my shoes several times at each and every one of you, just so you know. <laughs> but um, oh, it's so much. I'm like full right now. There was a comment I saw that said um something about we teach people how to love us yeah that was probably based Scott. on what we allow and what we don't allow and i want to i want to challenge the paradigm mm -hmm. the then it was mm -hmm. the last comment that you said um you highlighted mm -hmm. how we all have good and evil per se right mm -hmm. i want to challenge these paradigms for a second i just want to pose a question do we really treat people or excuse me teach people how to love us based on what we allow and don't allow? Or is it possibly mm. that people can only love us based on the capacity in which yeah, they yeah. love themselves? Come on. Come is on. it possibly that maybe I can, I can then only demonstrate love at the measure in which it's been shown to me, right? Why is this important? That if that paradigm was true, right? Of oh, we we teach people how to love us based on what we allow and don't allow. Now, I believe that plays a role in it, but if that was suffice enough by itself, then how could we explain some of the relational things that we have experienced? Because some of us have communicated, hey, this doesn't work. For some of us have community. Okay, so for the ones who have done that work, then how do we explain that? That leads me back to this paradigm shift of, hey, I can only love at the measure in which I love myself. And I can only, you know what I'm saying, demonstrate love at the measure in which it's been shown to me. And the, and the, the truth of the matter, not for everybody, but for a lot of us, Let's just call a spade a spade. We wasn't raised up in a home where that thing was demonstrated like that. The home is where we learn everything first. Mm -hmm. Some of us didn't have those dynamics mm -hmm. where 
we were shown by the authority figures, this is what love is. So then we go out and we engage one another in terms of relationships and boundaries based on what we learned at home. If we don't begin to go on a path, path to seek out some other understanding, you know? And then the paradigm of good and evil, can I challenge that? Is it that we, we have good and evil or is it that we just literally do what we know? Mm. Mm. And, and, and the reason why I wanna challenge our language because language is everything. And I think when we begin to break things down this way, it, it can soften one's heart to be able to see something from someone else's perspective. Versus I'm so upset, I'm so mad, I'm so this, because this is how you did me. I set my boundaries, I did this, I did that, but it didn't work. This is still how you did me. And then now I'm stuck in a cycle and now I'm making boundaries and standards and stuff out of that negative experience. But if I could stop and challenge myself and say, wait a minute, you know what? Even though this wasn't the greatest experience, I believe you love me to the best of your capacity. I believe you love me to the best of the ability in which you loved yourself. You can't give me something that you don't give yourself. I believe you love me according to the measure in which love was shown to you. Because had love shown, been shown to you in a greater measure over the years, it would have been large in your capacity and you would have been able to give me more. When we start shifting our paradigm to think deeper like this, I believe it not opens ourselves up to be more receptive and understanding and more compassionate. But I believe that is what's necessary for oneness. Mm -hmm. As the man of God said, we are so divided and it's a tactic of the enemy that we fall for it. Like it's easy. Like y'all all said, Oh, I'm matching energy. If you're doing this, I'm doing it. Let me tell you something. I'm not matching nobody's energy. I'm not coming off of the, the throne I've been given uh, seated with Jesus and we're in heavenly place. I'm not coming down for you. Mm -hmm. I work too hard to get here. Why would I step down for you? Why would I match your energy? Why would I want to be on a low frequency? Why would I want to be on a low vibration? You know how long it took me to get here. And even mm -hmm. on my, on my worst days, I'll be struggling feeling like, well, Lord, I got to build back up because I feel low. I ain't got time to be matching your energy. And then we turn around and wonder why we attract what we attract relationally. Mm. Oh, but we don't want to talk about that though, right? You wonder why you are attracting some of this stuff that we are getting back from people is because even, even if it doesn't directly mirror us, there's mm. something around them parts in there. Somewhere in there. Something's unresolved. <laughs> Something you may not be vindictive as in you petty and you on social media blasting people's business, but you may be vindictive in a form of you a gossiper. You may not. You see what I'm saying? And until we get to a place where we like, look, this is how this thing works. We, we do what we do until we learn better, until we can be better. And I'm not trying to match nobody's energy. I've worked too hard to get here. So I'm going to stay where I'm at. And guess what? I'm going to allow my boundaries to work for me. I'm going to allow the standard to work for me. <laughs> I'm going to allow the non negotiable This is how this ought to be used. Yes? I'm going to allow the boundary. I want to curse you out right now. I do. I do. And I want to lay hands that are not holy. I, I know. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh-huh, I do. But because of the boundary that was set to keep me in alignment, I'm going to pray for you. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to have a whole temper tantrum because the people that know me know I'm good for it. I'm going to tear God a whole new one. Yes, I am. Because, uh, you know, I don't believe in the theology that I can't talk to God. No, 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 no. That's your dynamic. Mm -hmm. That's because of your belief system, believing that he's master and your servant and you have not yet to step into the understanding of sonship. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to get into that. But what I'm saying is you stay <laughs> stuck over there with that 
And I'm going, I'm going to go in. I'm going to have a full blown tip of tantrum. And then when I'm done, I'm going to say, dad, uh, what is going on right through here? And spirit, honestly, is genderless. So depending on what I need in the moment, you can be mom, you can be friend, you can be dad. What's, what are we doing right through here? Because I want to lay hands on your people and it's not for healing. Mm. It ain't for healing. So help me and I'll be helped. Hmm. Well, okay. Well, yeah. but that part. Seriously. Yeah, wow. That part. Seriously. You, you, that's you, you, you good. Just said that's good. That's good. Y'all did it. You know, so and we'll me... join y'all tomorrow. Right. And, I'll um... see y'all later. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 So, uh, Listen. Let me read some of these comments because uh, Mirror White. Yeah, they going in. It's amazing that we will not. Oh, I read that one already. Let me go. Yeah. This one right here. If you think of a highway, boundaries are the white paint that keep us in line. People are able to move past us, get behind us, or get in the lane besides us. Mm -hmm. um, that's good. And uh, Tasha said that, Natasha. And she said boundaries are the cement. Boundaries are cement uh, builder oh. boulders that blocks the pathway of traffic. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. People can't only love what they have been taught. Mm -hmm. When you when you understand a person's past, you will understand how to how they love and how their ability to love. And I want to say something right quick before I go on with that one. That was something I wanted to say when uh midwife was speaking, because when this is the thing we don't want to do. And I hate that I do this, but it's who I am. When we understand, we operate different. When we understand, and this is why we don't want to really hear people's story, because it brings a sense of understanding. And with understanding come, comes accountability. Mm -hmm. So then God will say to you, you knew why they was walking with that limp. But yet and still... You chose to not walk on to help them in their walk. You want to walk on their weak side to keep knocking them down mm. because of your insecurities, mm -hmm. because of your fears, because mm -hmm. of your feeling like you're not good enough. So you're going to take somebody else and want to close off your understanding to keep them in the way, which is really keeping you in the way of not growing. So that's why we're not properly getting what we put out because the motive in what we're doing it in. We can't do and, and expect stuff because it, it ain't our actions. It's our motive. Mm -hmm. we, can, we know how to do it real good. We know how to act like we in love. We know how to act like we want somebody. And what, what we really want is we're going to get what we're going to get and do what we're going to do to get what we need to please our ego. To, I don't even say flesh no more because I didn't got the revelation of the ego. Ego is your flesh. And so we can't properly operate being spiritual in spiritual alignment to who we really are because we're spiritual beings if we're not tapped in to that. I'm sorry. Uh, while well, people tagging right now, I don't want to get everybody comments out. Or a person loves in the capacity in which they understand love to be true to them. That is so true. Um, okay, uh, Apostle Q writing too true, but past can't be an excuse or a barrier to love. Okay, we got to come back to that. Somebody hold that. Yeah, I, yeah, I got to get on that. <laughs> okay, you, yeah. hold that. you are absolutely, or you absolutely can because God is. Ooh, Okay, um, operating is ego, in ego, whether it's high or low ego. Okay, let's go back to this this one. Uh, is that what you said, Apostle Q? Said using their past can be a barrier or excuse because a midwife was saying something about you know trauma and how people were not taught to love. And first of all, I want to say God is love, right? And so when we understand our relationship and our characteristic and our nature of God that's on the inside of us, I don't feel like nobody ever taught me how to love. And, and I'm not boosting myself for ego. 
I am one of the most loving people I have ever known in my life through rape, through molestation, through abuse, through getting cheated on, doing the cheating, um, through imprisonment, through incarceration. I never lost my heart and spirit and love for people. I don't care how damaged I was, I did not allow trauma or damage to keep me from loving. All these people that get broke up with, they get cheated on, get beat on, they say hopeless romantic. I'm not a hopeless romantic because I ain't no relationship hopper. I'm not a random sex person. I never invested in a person without the expectation of longevity of a relationship built on the foundation of love. My parents didn't teach me I want no kiss and hugs, good night, I love you. I seen that crap on TV. I saw it in juvenile, I saw it in prison with foster people. I was not shown, no pun to my parents, I love them to death, they ain't perfect, they did the best they could. I was not shown love and affection. As a lover and a mate, I'm affection. I cater to my woman. I'm gonna hug you, I'm gonna grab you, I'm gonna open the doors for you, even when you piss me off. I'm gonna be that loving mate, in deed and action with consistency. So people, nature, past, but didn't teach me how to love. I feel like I was born with love in me. It's mm -hmm. in my spirit. Oh. It's in my nature. It's in my character. And so we allow society and we allow the barriers and the trauma of past experience to make us say, I can't love or I'm unlovable or this person is unlovable because they hurt me. They're unlovable because they piss me off. We piss God off every day. But don't he wake our stinking, nasty, messy selves up? The murderer, the child abuser the rapist, the dope dealer, the priest, the preacher, the prophet, all of us. We all got some nasty filth. We all got trauma that we have. We have trauma that we have given out. We have caused trauma in other people's lives, knowingly and unknowingly. Does that make us unlovable? Because I hurt you, because I disrespected you, because when I was young, I was a hoe and I had this girl, and this girl, and that girl. Do that make me unlovable? Yes, sir. Nobody can love you because you just put yourself out there. Now all these people are going to be more in your inbox because you talk about you whole. I, not, I and, got and boundaries. And all this other <laughs> stuff. And they're going to get beat up. They're going to get I mean, beat that, up. <laughs> I mean, that's, but y'all know that's me. People get on me and it's crazy because me and Ron was joking earlier. She was like, I'm about to have to be your, what'd you say, my Peter or my Paul or somebody. A little I, bit of an anchor. Yeah, I don't I don't yeah. always know how to say no. You know what I'm saying? People been in my head, cash at me money. Folk know I just got out of the hospital. I'm not working. Why would you ask me to cash at me some darn money? But my heart and my spirit is like, oh, let me go in my cash up and see what I got. Those so are unhealthy boundaries. That you, What's that? Let me challenge that. Let me challenge. I didn't that. cash up them. No, I didn't do it this time. No, no I'm not. Because I, <laughs> I know you you have. Oh, never mind. Leanne to speak. You was about to say something. I'll come back to that challenge later. I don't remember what I was about to say. I don't remember what I was about to say. <laughs> okay. That, so I, that, I just want to raise a so little yeah. bit more awareness to that, Apostle. Not to challenge, but you know, this is what we do, meeting of the minds. We show oh, yeah. one another. Yeah. You oh, yeah. So oh, when you, you have to understand trauma. So that is your story. Hmm? That is how it worked out for you. You have to keep that in mind. Two people could be in a car accident and have the same car accident and be affected by the same car accident two different ways. You were that diamond in the rough where for you, you know what I'm saying? Love was on you. Love was, that's how it was for you. That's not everybody's story. Yeah. And so what I'm just saying is that I'm not using it as a crutch or an excuse as someone that works with people, literally helping them transform trauma. This is something that we must understand a lot at the end of the day. And I'm sure because you do therapy work. So I'm sure you understand what I'm about to say. Right. At the end of the day, a lot of behaviors and stuff that comes from your early years of development. And it's, it, it's subconscious. It goes into the subconscious mind and it's automated. So a lot of the times we're operating in things and don't recognize we're operating in things until these things happen to challenge us, bring it to the forefront. And we're like, yeah, we got to get help. 
Yeah, we got to fix that because that's not how it ought to be. Yeah, I need to tap in more to God because God is love. But God, you know, everybody always just tell me God is love. But God, how do I show love? What is the proper way to people then go on these different paths and journeys based on when they get their aha moment and their awakening. For you, it, it didn't have to be an aha moment and an awakening because that's how you responded to life. But everybody is not gonna respond to life that way. As someone who has been raped as well, as someone who has been held at gunpoint, not once, but twice. As someone who has been in mental institutions, not once, not twice, but three times. As someone who has come, I come from a highly traumatic background. And I'm sitting here with you all today, carrying a conversation, just like you, as though a lot of the things that I experienced didn't even happen. It took a lot of work. I had to do a lot of work. Oh, yes. I had to do a lot of work. Right? Out there sliding down poles in survival mode. I've seen a lot of street stuff. I've lived the street life, right? So I understand that everybody, with the different types of people I've been exposed to, people respond to things so different, so different. And so in terms of compassion, what I'm just saying is I feel like we would have more unity if we would learn how to hold space for people. If I know that no one is perfect, and I hold space. Now, hear, hear this is where the boundary comes in, because as especially believers, we've got this twisted. We think we it means if we love, that means we need to be a doormat. No, that's what boundaries come in at. What it's simply saying is I love you enough to understand that you're also having a human experience and I'm going to hold space for you. That may now me holding space for you is me holding compassion and understanding. That doesn't mean I'm going to allow you in my space. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yep. But I'm going to hold space for you because I understand we're all doing this thing called life. And depending on those boundaries, depending on those non-negotiables, that determines how the interaction is then going to be, depending on those rules of engagement. So that's all I was saying. I don't want y'all thinking I'm out here excusing folks <laughs> and, and, no. and our shenanigans. I don't want y'all to jump me later. That's not, <laughs> that's not I'm what sorry. I'm saying. Before I speak, Leanne, was you about to say something? Mm. Okay. You just, I ain't never heard you this quiet before. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just, I mean, it's, it's because it's all, it's all good. I mean, you're hearing the different perspectives, you know, on, on the presentation of it. Of course, I have another way that I say a lot of what they're saying, you know, or you know, like I said, but all of us have different experiences with some of this stuff, whatever. And it all makes, it all makes sense. What I think generally what happens, I, I, I look at myself a lot of times in, in these kind of situations and just in life, period. People have asked me even the message that I pre not present. I think I'm like Jesus. Jesus taught the spirit of things. And that's where I kick in. It's for the spirit of it, not the, because again, some things can be semantics. Some things can be, uh, sometimes you can look at love and it can be the same action, different spirit. So it's, I can make the statement and say, oh, let me go home and clean up the house because I don't want my boo coming home and to a dirty crib. Or I can say, let me go home to the house, clean up the house because I don't want to come home bitching. <laughs> I'm going to go do the exact same action, but it's a totally different spirit. You know, so it's like when we highlight the spirit of what's actually happening, and that's what I listen for. And that's what I look for, you know, at the end of the day. And even in the way I present myself in life, it's like this come from the spirit aspect to this. Anything that is not in the spirit, the, the, the spirit of oneness, all right, anything that is not in the spirit of oneness in our actions is a barrier. And it is not really what we're thinking that it is. I don't use, I really don't even use the word boundaries. The only reason that I'm even talking about it is because this is the show that we're on. But it's like, and because it's a buzzword today. You know, but I really don't even really, I don't, I, I generally don't even use that that particular terminology. But like I said, everybody has different experiences. I'm like you. The, the, some of these things, nobody taught. The, see, I would say it more as we can only love at the level of consciousness we're at. We can only love at the level of revelation we've gotten mm -hmm. of love because i too it's like i don't we talk about unconditional love how many of us have actually seen that right right our whole society is you, you when you can count on how i can count on three people that I say i know right. that i know that i know love me unconditional mm -hmm. the rest of these people 
I need a title. I need to be stimulating them in some kind of way. I need to not make them mad at some point. And we have that even within our families. So our revelation of just in, in therapy, I'll say this real quick, in, in the therapy session I just had this, this mm -hmm. past week, the, the question came up, you know, about, well, how you wrote these books and stuff on relationship or whatever, um, does, that, does that make you an expert? Meaning you have all of this? Absolutely not. Just because I, I haven't experienced everything that I'm able to share in wisdom. That's mm -hmm. called prophetic. Prophet, prophets don't necessarily have experienced every single thing that they say the that they're mm -hmm. the messenger that's putting this out because they it doesn't change you. Your human experience doesn't change you from hearing what you hear from a spirit level. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like I need the same message that I speak when I'm talking about relationships, when I'm talking about what it's like, OK, I'm hearing it as wisdom. When I wrote my books, I wrote them. I channeled them books and I'm using the word channel to, to disrupt some, you know, church people Thank you. Or whatever. but it's like you know it was downloaded you know it's like so it's like i wrote those books i can tell because when i read my own writings i'm like i wouldn't have said that i because i can have an attitude and i can be stubborn and i do want to slap you you know the, the yeah. leroy now leanza i think hard. leroy was more funner than leanza Leanz because leanza is a lot more tamed <laughs> I just had, I literally just had this conversation with my therapist and she says, you seem to be very, very, she wanted to say compartmentalized. She says, all mm -hmm. the things that you've told me happen, aren't you pissed off? And I was like, yeah, yeah. She said, but you don't, it, it doesn't come out in that way. I said, because ha, do these things and have me respond the way I would have responded at 16. Oh, yeah. I would not be here. Right. I would that be in jail. My mother said to me, that my mother said to me when my brother passed, she said, I never thought I would bury us, I would bury one of my kids. But if I did, I thought it would have been you. That was a wake-up call for me. My temper was zero to one hundred. And mm -hmm. and that potential is still there, right? But that's not my core center of who I am. Mm -hmm. The potential for that, when we talk about somebody says something about the evil in us and this is that and the other. The potential for that is there if I choose that path, right? But when we recognize who we really are, that's not really what I want to be. That zero to 100 temper back then was me in fear. It was me living from fight or flight. It's me living from this mode of having to protect ourselves. And mm -hmm. what a lot of people are doing right now, this is this, this very sure. thing. Yep. We're trying to survive one another. So we're creating these boundaries to survive one another instead of recognizing that was never what it was before. Boundaries are there to help you thrive with one another. Guard your heart with all diligence for from it flows the issues of what? Life, mm -hmm. right? Guard your heart, guarding your heart and protecting your heart are not the same thing. I know oh if you my. look in a dictionary, they may it, it's oh say guarding is a form of protecting, blah, blah, blah. blah. But again, we're going to talk about the spirit of things. Guarding my heart and protecting my heart is not the same thing. Guarding mm -hmm. my heart is not about keeping people out. Guarding mm -hmm. my heart is about keeping it flowing the way that it was intended to flow so that people can come in and sit at a table and eat. Right. Now, yes, it does mean if there gets if some garbage gets in the river, I need to get it out. Mm -hmm. It's about keeping ourselves pure, clean, and free of evil. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not about keeping people out. Yes. Not yes. at all. Yes, yes, yes. Not yes, at yes, all. Yes. Yeah. So, so yes. all of this, what they're saying is like all of it to me is like bing, bing, bing. Yep. That all that all makes sense. I might not have said it that way, but I get the spirit of what of what's being what's See. being said and what's being stated. And I think that that is extremely important. These what we we have these shows. These you know I've been on some everybody show. And I'm finding out when I listen to people talk, we don't even understand what love is. It's not, you know, we talk about showing it. But the truth is, if, if God is this, guess what? So are you then. It's not just an action. We say, oh, love is an action. Right. Love is not just an action. Right. Love is a being right. that produces an action. And it can produce a feeling. It might not, it ain't a feeling, but it can produce it. You know, so it's a lot of this, I think, I love shows like this because, and I hope people watch it because, like, uh, I think like Robin was saying, it's like our language when we start to change our language around this. Guess what starts to happen? Revelation, mm -hmm. wisdom starts to download instead of fear. How our nature is tapped. 
And yes. now we begin to respond out of what the nature of our being, the core essence of who we begin to respond out of our Christness, because we all got it. Not our Christ. I said that the yeah, right there. Out of our Ooh, man of God. Robbie, Ooh. you remember when I said that to you yesterday? I said we got to stop mixing our emotions with spirit. So a you lot sure of our did. reactions, our responses are out of our emotion, not necessarily, I mean, culture shapes and makes us, but we still have the conscious choice and decision to allow our spirit man to behoove the emotions. We can allow the spirit of God that's in us and the spirit of us and nature and character to cast aside and cause barriers for those negative emotions, for those negative responses and reactions. I, I, I'm like Kemba Young. I, I was a fighter. I was trigger happy. I shot people. I ran folk over. So my incarceration, I wasn't bitter because I was like, I'm in here for something that I didn't do, but I really should have been in here for some shit I really did. Mm -hmm. Lots of time. But mm -hmm. the heart and spirit of me were in alignment. So it allowed me to love. It allowed me to move with mercy and compassion. How does God move with love, mercy, and compassion? How does Q move with love, mercy, and compassion? I always get stuck with the rejects. I get stuck drawing and attracting people that other people don't want to deal with. Other people don't want to rock with. Oh, they messy. They nasty. He cheat. He do this and that. But they don't deserve, they don't deserve love and mercy. Not from my natural me or character, but with the spirit of me, I'm going to give them the spirit of God. So let me take I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, you want to go around? No, I'm away. Go on, woman of God. Go on. Come on, GPS. So it's it's, it's a lot of things that's been said. Um, mm -hmm. One, when Robin uh, spoke about, the midwife spoke about having compassion. I'm going to go back a little bit and catch you up real quickly. Having compassion. I've always said this. We cannot put people on our measuring stick because we once we put people on our measuring stick, we create more bondage for them. And people need to do things at their pace. And we, as people, are like, y'all need to hurry up. Oh, my God, you're going through this five years? But you don't know how that <laughs> five year, how that cement, cement, that blockage, everything else has buried them down. And it takes a longer time for that, to, that root to get poured up or that that they rode to get dug down a little harder. It may take a little more time than it took us. And so then when people start judging and say, don't judge yourself, right? It's not wise to judge yourself with uh, uh, with other people. But when we start looking at, they went through this, they went through that. I'm still going through this. So the devil now gonna make that something to keep you in more bondage because now you're comparing yourself to somebody else, which is unwise. It's ungodly to compare yourself. It's not just talking about comparing yourself about they do this better than me, but no, let's they they further in life than me. They heal quicker than me. Or oh, I'm listening to certain things. So it's not an I don't like the word excuse because some people do get to a place and be like, oh well, now you're just excusing your behavior. But you know people who are trying to really grow and heal, and you know that spirit and energy, and we have to have compassion and not always quick to say, dang, it's taking you forever. You need to hurry up, or that's an excuse for your healing and everything else so that's something i did want to touch on because sometimes when people hear that they feel there's no also they feel there's no hope for them isn't that the reason though what you just said you know oh, they, they still on isn't that the reason that you have the fruit of the spirit called patience mm. and long suffering and yeah. long suffering that's yeah. the very reason that you got it but then but now you're not living in, so you're, you must in the, you're not in the spirit either when we when we approach things from that particular place, but that's the mm -hmm. reason that you got it with your spiritual self. Yeah, so it's not something that we make excuses for. I just mm -hmm. believe we don't need to put people on our measuring stick. And some things we can get to our emotions. And I'm telling you, it don't matter. They tell me I came out the womb speaking in tongues. You understand? So they tell oh, yeah. me. They tell me I love the Lord. I've been saved, sanctified my whole life. That's what I've been told. You know, because I I love God and I love His people. Mm -hmm. But. That my love for God and my love for people did not exempt my emotions this week. Didn't it, didn't do what? It exempt my emotions this week. Oh, this week, mm -hmm. it didn't make well, my emotions go away. There's a there's a thing that we we tend to demonize emotions. They are not demonic. They are not demonic. Actually, the spirit will show you how to properly use them. They're in, it's energy in motion. 
th there's a reason for it. I just said one of my brief groups, we talk about sadness and everybody thinks sadness is a, is a negative emotion. No such thing. It is now you can have negative behavior from being sad, but right. sadness in and of itself is not a negative emotion. It's actually a positive emotion. The cat ran out in the street and got hit by a bus. What are you supposed to be doing? Laughing? <laughs> like that, that it's a response of, and it's also connected very closely to love. You would yes. not be sad if you didn't love something or somebody. Yes. It's an expression. So a lot of times they get the bad raps. Our emotions should not be leading us but they should be signaling, signaling us. And then we say, spirit, what do I do? What is this, what is this temperature that I'm feeling? What is it telling me? What is it actually revealing that I need? Where's the wisdom now that I need? Okay, now you didn't gave me the wisdom. Now where's the practicality and the logic that I need in order to bring this about or whatever? God didn't give us all of these things to be in separation. Again, y'all know my, my ministry is oneness. And I think mm -hmm. we understand togetherness, but we don't understand oneness. Mm -hmm. We understand mm -hmm. unity and coming together for things, but we don't understand oneness. All right. That's so it, in that sense and in that space, it's like our emotions have their they have their place to signal us for certain things and to to give us a certain disposition for certain things. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like we have to figure out how do we integrate that we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. How do we reconcile these things? How do we bring these things into where? Oneness. oneness. How do we take oneness. our boundaries and bring them into oneness? I'm sorry, your boundaries should be. Now, I'm not stupid either, like Robin said, like, you know, but your boundaries should be unifying. So if somebody come and they're not acting right, you correcting them is not a saying, get the hell away from me. It's, it's bringing you to a place of saying, that ain't how we do each other. What, what's that about? Love so does love not not correct. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like it still brings us into correct alignment. Our boundaries should be bringing us into correct alignment. All and so when we have that reject the people and we accept it, because I, I like the, I'm always cool with the least likely. I've always been. Mm -hmm. But it comes to a place as well with the bound. If I'm living for me, a certain way of inviting everybody in, but I'm connected to somebody that's always kicking somebody out that don't mm -hmm. go together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if they are the, the ones that are the least likely, it's the, the reason they're the least likely because they keep kicking everybody out. Guess who Jesus it, didn't want to sit at the table? The right. Pharisees and the, the Sadducees. want to kick everybody out. Exactly. exactly. That's the first folk. They, they're, they're the ones that can shout, preach, they can um, um, tell you all your business and they can make themselves look as if they're exempt and they are perfect. And that's the thing. And when we start trying to walk in religion and start walking in the air and put on garments to look this part and not be this part, that's when Jesus is exempt from them. The type of people I was telling Robin today. I don't like wearing no collar and all that other stuff. Why? Because the same people that wore them garments and all that other stuff was the same people that killed Jesus. <laughs> I'm Jesus conscious. I'm a Jesus follower. So I don't need all them robe garments to look like I'm sanctified because I am sanctified and I'm sanctified in my love walk. I'm sanctified because I'm separated from, I'm sorry. So the scripture is, let me say this name. Go, the scripture is narrow is the way. Okay. They say narrow is the way. And they be talking about, oh, because people can't get into heaven because they're cussing, drinking, sexing, all that other stuff. You know what makes it narrow? It's the way you love. Because everybody ain't at a place of loving each other purely. Just being in line with God. Because the church is going to hell by the way the church. <laughs> And I'm not even a hell preacher. I don't do all that. But the, but that's what it is because we're going and we're trying to create an image that God had already destroyed. He didn't create an image for us. He just allowed us to be. He gave us a choice. So even when, and I did this study, when they got kicked out of the garden of Eden, they got kicked out of Eden, he still did not kick them out of his presence. He just kicked him out the part, that part of Eden. 
And he said, I'm still going to clothe you. I'm still going to keep you. I'm still going to cover you because you're still mine. But there are some consequences to this thing. But when we go back and we want to say we're walking not in the not in the image of Adam anymore, but the image of God, we need to go back and start submitting one to another. Mm-hmm. Because real submission mm-hmm. is not control. It's not what? Control. Oh. Mm-hmm. So really? let, let me ask you, let me ask y'all this. You you said something, you know, about the Sadducees and the collar and the cloth, but I feel and think at times that we put boundaries on love or God or spirit because we, we, he said oneness, we're talking about love and showing compassion and all this, but in our human natural flesh and mind, we're like Sadducees and Pharisees too, because like he said, there's no reconciliation because our flesh says he don't look and act like us, but I say I love everything and everybody, but I don't love what you do. I don't love your reputation. I don't love the things about you. And so we disconnect and we reject church people because of the stigma, and because of the stain, but where's the love then? And, and we talk about, you know, love being an action or whatever. Um, and I think me and Leanne are so like-minded and like-spirited when it comes to this. We can love the unlovable. We can judge them and talk about them with our heart and our flesh, but our spirit sees none of that. Spirit is transparent. Spirit has no tangibility. Spirit has no, to me, no right and wrong. Spirit is just spirit. And you just said it. He just let us be. And so when we talk about the church and church people and how they look and how they operate and because they have a collar and cloth, but then later on they smoke and crack, they cuss and are sleeping around. Do we throw love out the window? Is there a boundary right. for how I love or how I have compassion for this thing of this person? Because what I see in the natural, what I see in the flesh, my flesh is just as filthy as the next as it relates to God. Because it says he sees us. The reconciliation was Jesus, his sacrifice, his blood, his uh his, his, his death, resurrection. And so when he looks upon us because we're so filthy and because he's spirit and he cannot connect in contact with flesh, that's why flesh was crucified. Do we even crucify our own flesh and emotions to allow spirit to be, to cause oneness, to cause love, to cause um, exhortation, exaltation? But we we down people. We, we judge people. Let's be real. Oh, I ain't like them. I don't act like them. I say it all the time. I don't like church. I don't want to do church. I'm tired of folks slobbing on the mic. Uh, they can go to Planet Fitness if they want to do the Running Man and the MC Hammer. Why well, I got to spend money to keep going to church and paying musicians for y'all niggas to come up here and sweat and get musty and still go out there and be nasty to your sister and your brother? You know why you, you love God? You know why you irritated? Because it's the absence. It's a, the appearance of love. It is the appearance. It's the form of God. But the spirit is not in that. Because exactly. if the spirit was in that for real, Exactly. You wouldn't show up like that. Exactly. Because Only on Sunday, too. Right. So, so I can still love my brother. I can still love my sister. They can do whatever the case, what they want to do. But it cringes your spirit because it's not truth. It's not true. We know when somebody is going through and they're trying to become better. And then we see the people who are just living hellish and don't give up the F-bomb. Okay? Right. So then, then when our spirit is being in alignment with God to get closer to God and walk this thing, the one thing I loved about Peter, he said, upon this rock I build my church, which is Peter, correct? But the thing is about Peter, he had a change of heart. He had a change of spirit. And when he followed Christ, he did not rebel and say, I'm just going to do what I want to do because Jesus loves me. No, he said, I'm going to get further in my relationship and live it out because mm-hmm. I can't make the love of God that I have look like God's love is in vain for me because the way I want to show it to people. We cannot say we love Christ and hate our brother. Exactly. We, cannot, we cannot say, oh, we want to help the homeless and go feed the people. If we can't hug them for real because, oh, they stink. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And mm-hmm. so the, we all are guilty of judging. We all are. And as much as I don't like church, but I know I'm called to the church. I'm not called to the church because I'm so good for the church. I'm called to the church to ruffle up the feathers and see the real light of God coming through because not no more tradition or religion or just culture. God has embraced all of us. So it don't matter if you're a Jew or Gentile, Satanism, whatever the case may be. 
if you're talking, if you want to have a dialogue, let's have a dialogue. And I'm going to respect you and your word, your journey, your spiritual walk, period. I'm not going to cut you. I'm not going to beat you up and cut you off because of that. But it's the love that I have for you that draws people. And that's why the boundaries will draw people. Because what is your foundation? What is your, what are you doing? Why are you doing? Because sometimes I'm going to say this, a uh, true moment about me. I looked and I said, I started loving people and started doing, or I considered it love. I needed validation. So some things I was doing and giving out of people because I wanted them to validate me. I wanted them to be a part of my team. I wanted them to be a part of my circle. I wanted them to come on. Oh, Marnisha, you can do this or be on my bandwagon. So I gave. I wanted friends in third grade. So I bought everybody pops and stole money from someone collecting 50 cents just to have some friends in my life or feel wanted because that's what I knew. And to me, it looked like I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm loving. But what was my, why did I do it? I did not have a place of hurry. I did that out of a place of rejection. I did that out of a place of longing and wanting acceptance. Which so what I consider was me loving everybody was a sense of me being broken and not being whole. It was my fracture in my in my in my brick. It was the fracture that I had, and it, it, it wasn't lining up to my foundation because it was a crack in my foundation. But I always used to say, "Oh, I'm loving God and I'm giving." When God starts saying, no, you're doing it because of this. So let's deal with your root of rejection. Let's deal with your root of abandonment. Let's deal with your spirit of low self-esteem. Let's deal with you all the way. So not anything I do, I'm doing it because I want to. Leanza you said know what? I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, this is last name. Go ahead, Rob, after this. Leanza said something to me a while ago. He said, when we start doing stuff because we want people's reaction and we start manipulating the situation, we just started playing God and trying to manipulate them to do what we want them to do and not allowing them to be honestly who they are. Go ahead, uh, Mira. Yeah, no, that was just so good to me. Um, for for me, I, I went on sabbatical September 2019. I just, I think I'm kind of off, but then again, kind of not. <laughs> but it, it, was, it had been three years this past September. And a lot of this stuff that we're talking about tonight is stuff that God dealt with me personally, directly with in my walk. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget this last part came. It was still this year. Yep. It was in the beginning of this year. He was tearing me a whole new one. And, and this is where some of the things I've been saying, this is where it's coming from that place of revelation. He said to me, he said, Robin, you don't know how to love. Hmm. What? Not me. What, Lord? I'll give my last. I'll, I, you know, I'll give the shirt off my back. He said, "That's giving." I said, "You don't know how to love. Giving is great. Giving is good, but you don't know how to love." And hmm. he began to show me all the authority figures, and he was showing me. He said, "You are mimicking what you saw growing up." Mm. And these people mm. that were in your life that you're modeling what you think is love after that. He said, that's not me. That was never me. That's not love. And, and it was like the way he was talking. It was like I could hear the rebuke, but I could also hear the love. And his tone and hear that he's not mad. This is just something I need to recognize and realize so that I could truly, really begin my love journey. Mm. And that's when he began to show me just he would, the way he would flash certain instances and things that had happened in the past. Like I was like you, the, what you did, I, I was the type of person that always felt like I had to be doing something in order to be deemed lovable. So if I wasn't cooking, if I wasn't cleaning, if I wasn't serving in some way, if I wasn't making money, if I wasn't contributing in some way, then I was not lovable. Mm. That was that's what I had to work through. And, and, and how did that happen? He showed me the root. When I was little, again, our parents do the best that they can. But when mm -hmm. I was little, my adoptive parents, you know, she stressed education a lot. 
And so I remember coming in the house. I was so excited. I said, mommy, mommy, look, I passed my test. I was working so hard. I was a math test. Me and math are not the best friends like that. And, <laughs> and I was like, I was so excited. My mommy, look, I think I had got like an 87 or a 90 or something like that. I had bust my tail just to raise that grade. And her response was next time, bring me a hundred. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I grew up in a place where there was no affection. There was no affection. There was no affection like that. So it was like we were always trying to do something to get the attention and to get the validation. And so can you see me? Can you hear me? I'm here. But you don't recognize us when we're doing quote unquote good things, but we get beat if we do something that's wrong. And all of these things play a part in our psyche and our perception and how we perceive a thing. And I'm just saying that when I began to go on my love journey, this was my second one because God had tagged me before years ago, like 2009, 2010. He was working on me with my love journey and I went through bouts of testing. It was the most horrible experience. I would never wish it on my worst enemy. I don't know how I didn't lay holy hands. Nobody but God. Um, <laughs> but then it came back around this time when I got divorced. He was like, yeah, sweetie, you, mm, you just don't know how to love. And then that's when he took me back and he said, well, first we got to, now that you understand this and the root and where it's coming from and the warp narratives and perceptions you have, now let, let's start with you first. Because you're not going to be able to love anybody outside of the capacity in which you love yourself. So I want you to go on and take this Corinthian scripture about how we talk about how we ought to love others. And I want you to apply this to yourself first. Can you be patient with yourself? Can you be kind with yourself? Can you do these things yourself. for yourself? And that's how the journey began. You know, <laughs> so um, I just want to say that I want to put that out there because it's important that you know, I love our transparency because I feel like each and every one of us represents a different audience out there. People that are watching are going to resonate. Everyone has different upbringings, different walks of life, and they'll be able to resonate with whoever it is. You know, they feel like, well, dang, now what that was me. I went through that. Or, you know, my heart actually got taken advantage of. I was more like Apostle Q. Like, I always had love. You know what I mean? You know. It, you know, we all are a representation of, of different life experiences. Mm -hmm. But what I think is beautiful is that at the end of the day, even though each and every one of us has a different walk, has a different background, at the end of the day, we all did we all not come to the same place? Mm -hmm. At the That's end of the day, did we all not come to the same revelation that love is the way? <laughs> Okay, unity is the way. At the end of the day, we're saying it different, but at the end of the day, we all came to the same place, the same resolve. And I think, you know, as the man of God was saying, when it comes to the spirit of God, I, if that is not the spirit of God, so different walks of life, different experiences, but it, within our past and our journeys, at the end of the day, we got the same revelation. We got the same instructions. It came different ways. But at the end of the day, we can't. We, you see that? That's just blowing me away. I love that. I think that is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I'm sorry, y'all. Oh no, you good. So we always go over the time frame. Maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two. I we ain't gonna go too long. We gonna we could continue this, but uh, I don't know when. But um, <laughs> shameless conversation. I do want everybody to kind of give a closing remarks to say something empowering to the people. Um, to help us on our journey because all of us are going through a healing journey. All of us are. All of us are in some shape, form, or not fashion of our life are at the beginning. I don't even know. I just feel that. But I don't know everybody ins and outs, but I really sense that we are at the beginning of something, starting over, because we have been doing and doing and we are at a place of starting over. And we're starting over different than before because we gained the tools that we need for our next step. And I'm not trying to go really, you know, get there. Doom, doom. I ain't trying to get that, you know. Uh, but I just kind of um, really feel and sense that. So uh, if uh, 
Apostle Q will start off and just like give a quick second of uh, just closing out last remarks of boundaries versus barriers, or, you know, healing journey, whatever God just kind of really placed on your heart. Um, I would just say don't allow emotional barriers to cause to uproot your spiritual boundaries. That's good, doctor. That's good, the raw yeah. apostle Q. I gave him that name, y'all. You know what? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, midwife. Y'all, let me say something about this midwife. I just was on her 40 day birthing thing, right? And some days I miss, like, oh, dang, I missed it. It was really on Saturdays. But anyway, um, <laughs> but watching the replays and everything else. But I enjoyed every single day. This woman is just not a woman of integrity or just being prophetic or whatever. But she have taken, this is something I honor about you, uh, Rodney. You have taken different forms of spiritual modalities and brought them into oneness. And that is what I'm on this journey to do. And I love seeing it done because sometimes I'm like, God, I don't know how to put all the pieces together and make it sound cohesive. You have definitely made it cohesive. Y'all, if y'all need, um, it, it, when she said something about shadow work one day, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, because the church don't talk about shadow work. And that's pretty much going to the deepness, the root of stuff to deal with stuff we don't want to deal with. And why we deal with a lot of depression, anxiety, and everything else. So anyway, I thank you. Uh, Robin, go ahead, um, give your closing remarks. I love you. I appreciate your spirit. Go ahead. Amen. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> As the saints would say, give an honor to God. Oh, no, but, um, <laughs> I love y'all so much, and I so enjoyed this. This has been a blessing um, to me, and I, I know I ate real good and, and got shopping and challenged. And so um, I appreciate you all for that. Um, I'm just going to say, listen, I love y'all. And when I say I love y'all, now I'm talking to those who are watching, those who are there in the chats. I want you to know I love you and I love you for real. And um, I want you to know that you, though your past doesn't define you, it is necessary that you, you, uh, you know, have the posture Hmm. where you can extract. So in other words, switching the, the paradigm and the mindset and instead of being in a place of, dang, man, this happened to me. And I know humanity, it hurts, but I want you to switch on your divinity and begin to extract everything that was necessary from the past experiences that you have in order to continue to push you forward. I truly believe that in this hour, that is more than necessary. I believe if we would tap into that, we wouldn't be saying things like, oh, everyone is so toxic and, oh, you know, I'm giving the same energy. Because if we all would just get into a place where we would be doing that and doing our own work, that contribution alone, I believe, truly would make the world a better place. Because I'm not worried about you because I'm working on my mess. Did you see how filthy I was? I, I, I got to get this together. So if, if I'm focused on working out my mess and the next person is focused on working out their mess and so on and so on, there will be less pointed fingers. We wouldn't have the finger to point. We wouldn't have capacity at that point because we're trying to work out on our own stuff. And, and I feel like we would, we would love a lot better. Yeah, and we're not perfect, but it, you know, it is what it is. I love y'all, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Um, Leanza. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just, you know, just say, let's do it right. Let's just do this right. I think, um, you know, when you talk about the boundaries and barriers, if you're going to use those words, then understand what boundaries really are for. A lot of what we have seen um, in the past few years, well, since humanity, probably, we jump on the buzzwords. We jump on what's the popular thing to say, and we don't understand what they mean. Like even like self care, it it, it triggers me in a trigger. I'm you know 
those kind of words, <laughs> because they're used in ways that it was never intended for. And as a mental health professional, it's robbing the mental health people of certain things. But anyway, we'll talk about that another time. But if we're going to use words like boundaries, understand what they're for. They are there to help us all thrive. They are not there for survival. They're set to help us all thrive. And if we start taking the mindset of oneness, start taking the mindset of I'm loving as a being. Y'all hear me say a lot of some of you that know me, hear me say, I am love for you. It's a being that will produce some doing yes. that will lead to having, all right? So when we operate from that particular space, I think, and our boundaries are now informed by our nature, not by our trauma. Mm. Our boundaries are now informed by how we're designed, right? And not by us trying to defend ourselves from everything that's around us. And again, I'm not saying just go stick your hand in a lion's mouth. I'm saying, understand, understand a lion, respect it. Realize that if you stick your hand in his mouth, it's going to bite it. You know, so, so some of these things with our, with our boundaries and stuff like that. I just, I think it's, it's just more so if anybody took anything away from this, it's understand what they really are and understand what they really are for and how to properly, uh, how to properly um, apply them. And if you don't know how, get in counseling, go see Robin, you know, cause uh, it would, it would give us a better world and a better place if we actually understood it. Cause all it's really about is really just you being the you that you were designed to be. And when Robin is a Robin tree and Q is a Q tree and Marnisha is a Marnisha tree, then we all can eat and nobody's and worried about nobody else. Tree. And the Leanza is a Leanza tree. You know what you're going to get when you come to my tree. You know what you're going to get when you come to my garden. That's the boundary. It's being who and what you were designed to be. Point blank period. And we need each other. It's not a per it's, it's a personal work, but it's also a collective work. We need each other. The way we grow is act believed, and this is research based. We grow through relationship. So even how Marnisha earlier when you were saying, and I know we this is our closing, but when you were saying the, the part about you doing certain things for friends and to get friends with some of that is not horribly bad. Bible says if you want a friend, show yourself friendly. Now yeah. let's heal your why in here if you're trying to manipulate. Mm -hmm. But the gesture in and of itself is how we should be. And it's also how we grow. We need community. We need one another. I am because we are. My shirt right now says, I am we, right? It's like, I am we at the end of the day. I'm not just me individually. I'm a part of oneness. I'm a part of a one. And this is Robin, why we came back to the same center. Because it's not about the, it's not about the road. It's about the revelation. Mm. Mm. And I think when we understand that, and when we get to that space, our boundaries can now become things that is for our collective thriving and not just our individual survival. Amen. And it is so. Huh. It is so. Yes. I say, it I say so. the power to make it so. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I am, um, I told y'all this is going to be epic. This is great. I am humble. Definitely humble that God has given, given me this vision to do shameless conversations because I was in a place for so long being shameful about who I was. Mm. Even to tell that story about things I've done to gain friendship. Mm. And the church kind of taught me indirectly how to not be my testimony or not share my testimony. And I couldn't help nobody as much as I wanted to help. But one thing I realized is me being intentionally in this season, intentionally, intentionally verbal about the things I'm going through has allowed me to heal in areas that I didn't even know I was hurting me. Mm -hmm. So y'all, I thank y'all for joining us. Um, if y'all need anything from any one of us, I know their inboxes are definitely open. They are awesome people, trustworthy people, and they definitely hear the voice of God. And they are in tune to direct instruction, not just the cliche of what sounds good. If y'all need a, a ear to hear, somebody just to listen, 
contact Robin, the midwife, uh, Leanza, the relationality specialist, Apostle Q, the raw apostle. Um, he's just the only one that got a church building right now. First, because <laughs> I sure ain't get no building. But anyway, um, <laughs> and all of us are in fivefold ministry. Let me just say that each one of us on this live is definitely fivefold ministry. But um, I really thank y'all. I want to just publicly thank y'all again. Last minute pop up. He will be back. And it won't be as long. It won't be long played out. We'll be, we'll be back touching on some real life subjects. If y'all have any questions, um, concerns, snag comments, anything, inbox me. Let me know. Thank y'all for joining our, uh, your GPS, God's personal servant. I love y'all. We love y'all. Y'all four, y'all three, don't get off the live. I'm about to end the broadcast and y'all stay in. All right. Love y'all, deuces. Hold on.